We are doing some painting today, uh, and I am going to be painting some Armada ships. We've got a uh, Victory Star Destroyer and a Venator Star Destroyer. We're, um, we're going to be painting these guys up for Star Wars Armada, and uh, I'm going to be doing some interesting things here because I know a lot of people have asked, you know, hey, what... There's been there's first off there's a lot of tutorials out there on how to paint, but I've had a lot of people ask me on like, hey, how how do you recommend? What colors should I use? What what paints should I use? So on and so forth. Uh, and of course, first off, you don't need to use any. You can just simply run it like this in the Empire. Um, but you know they were pretty quick about repainting them. So uh, the Venator is the easiest because you can always just get some gray paint and put it over top and just make it gray and then do some of the panels and then you know and then if you want to put a wash on it, you can do a wash. And then you can put some blue in the engines, and you know the, I think it's probably the easiest. Uh, but I usually don't do it quite that simple. Uh, this one will be a little harder because we have to try and color match this kind of white, and it's not a it's not a straight up white, right? It's definitely an off white. And then of course we need to color match the red as well. Um, and so uh, I don't have exact colors for that, and I usually just I mix things myself. Um, so, so that's kind of what's going on. I'm, I'm a little bit low on some of my airbrush colors. Uh, unfortunately, I'm all out of this pale blue, um, which is one that I really like, because I like to mix this, a little bit of this in with some gray, and it gives it a little bit of that imperial, because it's not a straight, um, a straight up gray. It's, it's got a little, just a hint of blue in there, and I really like just adding a hint of blue into it. Um, just a few drops into a pot, you know, just to kind of, just to kind of give that uh, that gray a little bit more life, um, and so so I but I'm out of that, and I'm really low on my airbrush white right now. So what I did is I put a whole bunch of um, this uh, reducer uh, and uh, almost water, and uh, and then I added some regular Vallejo white, and I mixed it up a little bit, and and it's it's kind of it's kind of in there, you know. I kind of have that I have that much going on for it. Um, so that's that's kind of a start. So I'm going to start, um, and 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 I do need a new airbrush. I definitely do. I, I one of these days, I uh, I was basically I left my airbrush overnight without rinsing it, and I left paint in there overnight, and it totally filled the whole thing up. And uh, and while I soaked it in paint thinner and all this other stuff to try to clean it out, it's just never completely come back. So my airbrush is not the best of quality, but it still works. It's still better than trying to do this all with a brush. Now. Some people will, will, um, what should we call it? And of course, I'm I'm doing like my some a homebrew of stuff. I'm just trying to lighten it up right now, since I'm not using actual airbrush paint. There it goes. I got to get past the clogs, and then it starts coming out a little bit more clean. Uh, I'm only gonna do this for to get base coat stuff down, and then we'll we'll go over. Ooh, wow, that's really bright. And as you can see. What airbrush do I recommend for a beginner? Uh, I I use a master airbrush. Um, they're not the most expensive. Um, I think uh, Iwata is definitely better once you're um, once you get more uh, once you get better at airbrushing. I'm not there yet. Uh, I'm not a I'm I'm in a lot of ways I'm still a beginner. I've been airbrushing for a while, but I've also ruined at least two airbrushes. So I'm I'm not ready to pretend like I'm very good at it yet. Um, but I'm just trying to get this guy lightened up and then I'll kind of go over with a little bit of a darker, um, a little bit of a darker color. I, you know what I feel like would probably work over white is I feel like if I took Agrax Earthshade and I put this all over white, it would end up looking this color. I, I feel like that might happen. So if I get this thing a little bit too... Um, if I get this thing a little too too pale, um, I'm gonna use an Agrax Earthshade wash uh, instead of a Null Oil wash. Although I could do both. Um, also, if you're curious w w what stands I'm using, these are stands from Mel Miniatures. They're the display stands that Mel Miniatures offers on uh, Shapeways, and um, I used to use them for. I bought them with the intention of displaying stuff, but that quickly went away, and I've instead. Um, kind of just went ahead and used them as painting stands. They work perfectly as painting stands. And I thought that that was pretty cool. So this is just all a mixed kind of paint that I'm using. It's basic, basic Vallejo white 
with a lot of water and some thinner in there just to make sure that it goes through. I'm gonna let that dry up a little bit. And uh, I'm gonna add a little bit of black in here now and uh, I'm gonna start doing this guy in an imperial gray while I let this one dry enough to put like a, another coat over the top of it. Um, and I'm, so I'm gonna add a little bit of black to my white. I don't need to add much. I should put three drops in there. Um, that might have been too much. We'll see. I might need a lot more than that. Yeah, I have very little in the pot, so I'm gonna add more. Um, this time I'm gonna actually go with airbrush paints. Add some, some more of that. And some more black, I'm just adding. I always do a custom mix. So like people ask me what colors I use, I can never give you the answer that you're looking for because I always mix my own stuff kind of according to however I feel that day. This is kind of the, the type of gray I have going right now. I feel like it probably could be a little darker than this. I always do kind of on the base first. All right. We're still a little on the thin side. We can still see the paint through it. It's okay. We're going to do multiple coats of this. Let me move the victory away. I don't want him going gray again. <laughs> Still have a lot of that water in this pot in this mixture right now so it's a little on the on the thinner side and of course once i'm done too uh, i'm i'm definitely gonna come in and paint the engines uh black again or at least a darker gray not not full black there we go But the airbrush is what's good. What's so good about doing an airbrush is it goes on nice and um, it, it gives you like full coverage, and but it goes on smooth, and you don't get brush strokes because you know a lot. It's kind of it looks usually pretty subpar when someone paints uh, you know anything that's got large smooth areas with. Um, with a brush and you see all those brush strokes, uh, it's, it's usually unfortunate looking. And, um, and I want mine to look a lot better. And uh, some people were like, should I, should I strip my ships first or should I prime them? And you really don't have to. The FFG uh, paint that goes, is so thin. Um, it's, it's, un un it's just two things. It's harder to strip than normal paint. Uh, I've tried soaking like X-Wing and Armada ships in Simple Green, and you don't get nearly as much off. Um, but well, that's a pretty decent Imperial Gray right there. That's a pretty good start. What do you think? I mean, like, this was easy, right? It's just black and white. That's how you make gray. We're going to do the underside right now. Probably thinking, like, well, nobody's going to see the underside. My brush, I've got, I got flow issues. It doesn't always come out smooth, but then sometimes it does. Then I get a huge burst of it coming out smooth, which is, it's fine if you're just doing big base layers. It's a little bit harder when you're trying to do precision stuff. It is, uh, so I will probably be in the market for a new airbrush, one of these, before I, at least before I try to do something super serious. When I did my dragon for uh, Age of Sigmar, that one was frustrating because I had certain things I was trying to do very precise and it did not always work out the way I wanted it to and I, so then I had to go back and go over stuff again okay so this one is looking real good real 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 good now the, the, the tricky part is is going to be trying to get this guy up with a little bit of that that brownish kind of look. Um, what's going on, everybody in chat? If you guys are watching, we are painting some stuff. I Sorry, I missed some chat. 
Um, what's going on, uh, JJ? Um, what's going on, Robert? Uh, what's going on, Zeros? Um, uh, what's going on, James and uh, Aminta? Uh, James says, do you think the Imperial Venator expansion will be coming? Uh, maybe. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm honestly, it's, it's hard for me to predict things right now because they give us no, no signs that, that what we got was coming. So it's kind of got me thinking, boy, I have no idea what to expect. I have no idea what to expect. All right, I'm going to put some middle stone in with this white. Uh, and then, and then more white. I need to get, I need to order more white or airbrush white. Lots more of that. So that ends up looking kind of like, kind of an off-white right there. Yeah, this is this is slightly more of an off white. Oh yeah, I like it. I'm liking that. It has a lot more of a republic look to it. I think this with the wash is gonna get me the look that I want. You can kind of see the half and half there. It's kind of got flesh tones almost to it. Um, and I kind of like that. But then the blend, all right, it's like, I didn't need that much white. White gets overwritten very, very quickly by other colors. So when you're mixing colors, you know, if you want something to be light, a light version of any given color, you gotta use a, a lot of white and then just a little bit of whatever else it is. All right, I need. A little bit more of this to thin this out a little. I'm getting, getting it. There we go. Oh, the bottom did not get it very good. <laughs> Bottom some more in there. I'm getting paint on my hands. Oh no, it fell over. We've got a victory down. Victory down, everybody. All right. Well, well I don't want to touch it just yet, but I guess I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have some fingerprints on there now. Right, I'm just gonna let that dry for a little while. I'm not really sure if I need to go back. I, I think I'm going to do another pass on this guy with a slightly um, slightly darker shade just to have some, uh, uh, like maybe a little bit of a gray gradient on the Venator. Um, yeah, I think so. What's going on, Jacob? We are, uh, we're doing, we're doing this guy right now. He's, he's drying, but he's not, he, we still got some parts where some of that is showing through. So, and what one of the, what my basic plan here is to I'll you know I'll get the some of the panels in a, in a much darker gray. I might get like the docking or the you know the the side areas, and I might do those with a little bit of blue. Um, all right, but I'll also when I'm all done too, I'm gonna put lights all throughout it too. I like to get some white and some a very very tiny brush and just do like bridge lights and interior lighting, because um, that's something I always like to do. Um, you know. Um. Not sure if it helps, but I, let's see, Saf says, um, not sure if it helps, but I found when I used to paint X-Wing ships for years uh, back that a good ivory highlighted by Insignia White and washed with an umber tone worked well for white Star Wars ships. Yeah, yeah, the, mo most most whites aren't true white. Um, but, uh, but yeah, doing an off-white usually looks better. And then, then you kind of save the... Uh, you definitely kind of want to save the the um, what's the word I'm looking for? Oh, we're almost out of this one. Oh, that's it. The, the the pod is dry. All right. 
Wanted to get the rest of that out first. All right, I think that, guys. Because this was a, I started off with a wetter mixture, so uh, it's gonna take a little while for him to dry. So we're gonna go a little bit, uh, a little bit darker. So I'm gonna do, I'm, I'm gonna probably do like 50-50, or maybe 60-40, 60 40, 60 percent white, and uh, maybe 40 percent black. That should make this a darker spray, and I'll try to just get some patches uh, in here, and it should be, it should be off a little bit. Yeah, because that's that, that's much darker. bit of this reducer just to thin it out. I always like to put like a couple drops of airbrush reducer in there in the pod because some of these paints seem to like get a slightly thicker over time and some of them I've had for a while. All right let's test this out. All right. Let's see how we do. I'm going to start. When, when, when you're not sure how a paint is going to work sometimes, too, you, I like to start on the bottom. And I have to actually pull my... I have to pull the, 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 the needle out on mine because part of the, the clog is where the needle hits. Now, it has been suggested to me that, oh, you can get like a jewelry kit um, and like a cleaner kit that does like electrolysis. For this thing and I'm like that's a cool idea but for the price of doing that I could just get a new airbrush and then I have to have a place to store all that oh this is I guess this isn't darker than the gray that I've already got I'm gonna put a little more a little more black in there let's try and make it darker I wanted a little bit more of a, a fade in here I'm not seeing that just yet. Mm -hmm. There we go. Oh, I see. I, I see a little bit of it going on there now. You see that? It's a little darker around the edges. That's kind of cool. All right. So what I'm gonna do now is just get this in here. In the bag. gonna do it um for the the venator um and oh, gosh i feel like i thought a live stream you know i thought i would have had more time to get all these airbrushed but i think um, i think they're kind of where i want them to be um esteban says i really want to know how to paint the squadrons you kind of scared to paint am, am i gonna do a providence too um not today um one of the reasons why is i have a rebel um Providence kind of already done. So if you guys have seen my, when I'm done here, maybe I'll show it to you. I have painted a, um, a rebel fleet in blue and, uh, I have a, a separatist fleet painted in purple. And for the Providence, I started out doing it in blue, but then decided on the purple color scheme. So it's like half blue, half purple. And it's the same blue I used for the rebels. So it's actually already, like halfway, it's a, it's a perfect blend between the same blue of my Rebel Fleet and then the purple of, oh, this is still nice and nice and wet, uh, but it's already a, a, a good blend. Actually, you know what, I'll do that. Well, this is, these are drying, and I need to get like a, a heat gun or something to put on there and, and kind of, because this, what I want to do is I want to put a wash on this thing also, 
uh, and see if I can get it looking good. I'm probably not going to do all the red bits today on here because I still haven't found that color. Uh, although I do think it's going to be something like a, a more of a, a, a brick red. I've got, shoot, I had one around here just yesterday. Um, but uh, I think it's going to be something kind of like this, this black red. I think this is the color I'm going to start with for doing uh, this Vallejo. I use a lot of Vallejo paints. I do use some Citadel paints as well, as you've seen with Agrax Earthshade. Um, you know, I, they should have, Citadel has good washes, uh, but I really like Vallejo's paints, um, you know, in, 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 their, in their dropper bottles. Um, so so this, is, uh, this ended up coming out a little darker, I think, than I initially wanted. I could probably go over this one more time with a lighter gray. Let me, uh, but I'm gonna get a, uh, an Imperial ship to compare it to, and then I'll show you um, let me, let's, let's move and grab some things. Do, do, do. Let's see what we can grab. I'm going to grab Star Destroyer. And. Okay. So hold on. Let me see. Here we go. Here we Play. Put the Star Destroyer next to it. Yeah, it's definitely darker than the Star Destroyer. So I want it to be a little bit lighter. So I think we are going to be doing a lighter shade on that. And um, for my Rebel Fleet, you know, I did the Rebel Fleet in this kind of a blue here. Right here's my Rebel Pelta. Um, so the rebel, or the the basically the uh, the one providence that I use that I can use for the rebels is already in a very very similar color scheme, because it's it's like half it's half purple half blue, and right? I did like a swirly like almost like a, a candy candy cane stripe, going around it, um, and so it it fits it fits both fleets because my 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 separate and I have some that are just normal but I also have some that are in the purple fleet, so it it, it definitely works for both. And that's, uh, that's kind of the way it goes. Um, uh, let's see, let's see. All right, uh, I need to also get, I want to get a, uh, a Republic ship now since I already painted that one. Um, so I can kind of compare color schemes. Here we go. I'll get this guy. Oh, actually, that's pretty close. That is pretty close. All right, I'm coming back around. We're going to sit down and do some more. All right. <clears throat> So, yeah, I feel like the victory is going to end up being close to this once I get once I get a, a, a light wash on it. I think I did. I, did, I think I got it kind of close. We'll have to see. I'm going to do Agrax Earthshade on it. I'll use a big brush. I'll kind of apply it pretty liberally. Um, I think that's a good way to go. Well, it's getting it's starting to get dry but it's not there yet. I don't think blowing on it is gonna do it. I'm gonna hyperventilate and pass out on a live stream if I keep doing that. So um, let's get let's get this uh, going with a little more, a little more light. And put some black and some white. And then a little bit of water. I don't need much more because I just need one more pass over the Venator to lighten it up. To lighten the mood. Because I want it. That's definitely a lighter shade. Plus, I can actually go a little lighter than normal. Although that... Oh, the problem I'm getting is my... Oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's it. That's beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna leave it at that. Let's let's see. Let's see. Let's do the the Pepsi challenge with the uh, the ISD now. Okay, okay. I think we I think we're I think we're close enough. It'll be a little different once we get the wash on there, but I think that's a good good stopping point. I still have a little darker on the inside too. Since I did it darker, and then I just did the the lighter spray from the top. I think that's where I want to be. Okay. It's still wet though, I just got some more on my hand. 
that's a, that's a thing that happens when you paint with an airbrush a lot. I should probably wear gloves. I get it all over my hands. <laughs> all right. So this guy's gonna dry. He's gonna he's gonna take a lot a long time. Um, but yeah, sometimes it's and that's the fun of of like mixing colors. You can just kind of keep going over it uh, a couple of times. The other cool thing about that is with the extra coats, um, I don't have to worry uh, very much about. Uh, I don't have to worry very much about um, seeing the the little designs. Like I'm not gonna see you know th these designs on that ship kind of poking through. Which is uh, especially, which is especially cool. Okay, so let's see here. I gotta see if this guy is. He's not dry yet. I can't put a wash on him yet. He's gonna take forever to dry. Well, I guess I can try and put some some red on him. Uh, maybe I could just do these these panels over on this side um, with the red, and we'll see if I can get a good uh, a, a match for that color. I feel like. I feel like this is going to work. I think this black red is going to work on its own, um, which is will be pleasantly surprising if it does. It will be a really really nice if I don't have to if I don't have to do much to it. What's see? This is a small brush, so I'm just going to start with this little bit right here. Problem with applying this with, with a brush is it's going to go on so wet. I have to do multiple. I'll do two thin coats. That's what they say, right? Two thin coats. I might need a bigger brush. This is much too small of a brush for this. I think I think that's close. I think that's close enough. I think that's a good color match. All right, so I'm going to use a bigger brush. Let's see if I can. This is, a, this is a big brush, but it's a little sloppy. I don't know if I want to use this brush. Let me grab a, let me go grab a better brush. I gotta get up a little bit. All right. I want one that's big, but oh man, I need new brushes. Oh, where's all those brushes I got for Christmas? Oh my goodness. This is, see, this is what happens when you, when you are alive is unexpected things like, I found all the brushes. Sweet. All right, I'm gonna use a new brush. Cheap brush, but a new brush. Okay, so I'm using a brush like this. It's a bigger brush, and it's gonna give me more coverage, but this isn't super frayed, so it shouldn't get like all over the place. All right. Oh, this is interesting. I think some of this paint on here is still wet, so it's sort of blending in with this. Oh, well. It is sort of blending in. It's turning this into a pink. I'm getting all kinds of brush strokes on there, which I definitely did not want. So I'm gonna wet and make it wetter. Well, that's what happens when you live stream too. You're like, oh, I can't just sit here and let it dry for like two hours. What am I gonna do? So. No, I should have just, uh, I should have just let it dry and then I could have called it right there. <laughs> All right, well, I'll put this other one on here. <laughs> there we go. All right, let me check on, uh, 
Live streams and hair dryers. Yeah, right. I, well, I saw that uh, AMG just, uh, yeah, hair dryers. Very cool. Um, uh, out of curiosity, have you tried varnishing oil and washing? I find it is much less hassle than dealing with acrylic washes. I have not. I have not. Uh, I usually just use Nuln oil. Um, I, once upon a time, I actually... Um, Maybe that's what maybe that's what varnishing oil is. I don't really know specifically what what a, an example of a varnishing oil would be, unless of course you're talking about known oil, because um, I think they use oil in the Citadel washes, but um, I'm not sure. The oil just could be part of its name, and maybe there's no oil in it. I don't know. But I, I once upon a time I've actually just taken you know black acrylic paint, and uh, I want to get. taken just black acrylic paint and mix it with lots of water to make a wash also it's a little different um, but you can do that or in some cases you can do a contrast paint over top and it kind of acts as a wash so this is obviously going to need another coat but um well stay on the stand will you oh great and i just got red on there Oh, that's all right. It's all right. Trying to neaten up the, the insides here. How am I centered? Am I on camera? I'm still on camera. Good deal. Um, but yeah, so I'm really... Uh, how many of you guys watching are like excited to have new Armada ships to build? I'm curious what your favorite is, too, uh, because I... I like, I, I, you know, I, I go to Ryan Kingston's fleet builder and I'm trying to build ships and I'm like, man, there's new stuff now. Oh my gosh, we got new things, you know, and, and just can't wait until the Architons makes its way over to the Republic. Because once the Architons is available for the Republic, it's going to be a whole new ball game. Whole new ball game, man. I, I, I'm going to, because like I play Empire the most. And one of those reasons is the Architons is my favorite ship. Um, I don't know if the Empire is my favorite faction as a whole, but I end up, like, it, I didn't intend, like, I didn't just pick the Empire because I'm like, whoa, yeah, Empire. I just end up liking the way their ships work. Probably the most. And their mechanics and their play style and stuff like that. So, um, gameplay-wise, I, I functionally like the Empire the most. However, I'm going to get the bottom of this too. Um, however, I'm not, uh, you know, I, I, I probably identify more with the Rebels. I like the Rebels. Um, and they have some things that are way more, like I really like their B-Wings. Like the B-Wings are maybe the best, one of the best squadrons ever. But, well, you know, but we've got no Architons. For the rebellion, right? The, Rebel, the rebels actually do have some good ships, though. The the assault frigate is really good. Um, it just looks ugly. And the empire has probably the prettiest looking fleets in the game. <laughs> uh, Mint got a surprise gift card at work and immediately used it to get a Providence. Awesome. Dar Vader Defender is your favorite. Yes. Um, Laser Book and Helmet says, Crabok, what's your what's your guess as to what is going to be in the 501st Battle Force for Legion? Um, we, are, we are talking Armada, but I, I'll talk Legion also. Um, I think the 501st is uh, going to allow Phase 1 and Phase 2 clones. Uh, I think it's going to allow ARC Troopers. They already s talked about ARC Troopers. Um, I think it's going to allow Anakin Skywalker and Rex. Um, I think it's going to be uh interesting in that it probably will not allow padme um so you know uh because it's gonna be more of a strictly military um kind of side of things and uh and if you don't have padme that's gonna be really really interesting um i, I won't be surprised if there's a card that gives maybe rex exemplar or something like that um you know okay like if rex could get exemplar that would make him way more usable um or at least a clone 
uh, a clone commander. So that you could probably give it to it a generic clone trooper as well. Um, but it would be better on Rex since he's got uh, the ability to get aims when he moves. Um, as far as like new things that can go into the 501st, because I, I don't, I'm not sure if Barks, I, I might guess that ATRTs and Barks may be usable in the 501st. I'm not 100% sure as to what vehicles. I think it, 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 when it comes to vehicles, I think a lot of it's going to be balancing uh, more than theme, because I think you could probably justify just about any, you know, um, just about anything to go on there. Um, the infantry support platform would probably work well in a clone-centric list, but it might be a little too strong if the 501st get other good clone-centric things. So I think the 501st is going to be uh, a battle force that's very clone-centric and uh, gives the clones some good buffs. And, uh, and I think that will be a little too strong if we, uh, if we decide to give them everything else that helps clones as well. And, uh, and the infantry support flat platform is kind of in that, fits that bill of something that really helps out clones. Oh, I'm doing a second coat on top here. This is now looking like it's the right shade. But it's still got brush marks. brush marks I wish I could I probably could have just taped this part off and airbrushed in there with with this same color of red and been okay I maybe I should have done that because I'm not happy with this this one is better because I made this one super thin um, and it's ending up coming out a hundred times better well It's, again, Duncan Rhodes, two thin coats, right? He, he, he says it for a reason. Wet blending, man. I can probably go over this once it's fully dry and get that. So this is that the stuff I'm talking about. It's like right in there. I got like this little mark where some of the paint came off and, you know, imperfections it's okay because i'm still gonna go over everything with a wash again once it's all dry and it's it's not there yet that's the rice i'm gonna probably have to do tonight or tomorrow it's not dry enough for me to wash it just yet especially the way after the way this paint took but that's okay the idea is there and it's mostly going to work. Once we get a wash on this thing, it's going to look great. I might even do like a line down the middle, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I don't want to do it now since the sides have already given me enough difficulty. And as this is probably where I'll kind of wrap things up. We'll go back and look at the Venator again, see how it's drying, make sure it still looks good. All right. Uh-huh. I feel like I need to get in there. bottom of this this little this ridge all right that's really good and then we got to do a little bit more on this side to just get this bottom bottom lip a little bit more right here and and I can touch up any of the other parts that need touching up later. It's okay to make happy little mistakes. I always call it battle damage. Okay. Do, do, do you seal the colors with clear coat? Um, usually, I do. Um, I haven't been doing that for Armada very much. But I, I absolutely do for 
other miniatures. Um, as a matter of fact, the one I, the one I've got right now is is this uh, this army painter Matt Varnish. Um, I, I I actually just finished up my Age of Sigmar Stormcast Eternals army. I've finished. I, I had some more guys to add to do for that. And uh, one of the really things I definitely do this for like Legion and uh, and 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 Warhammer and stuff like that because you have basing materials also, and a lot of the basing materials have loose little bits like granules of sand and dirt or snow, uh, the tufts and things like that. And so when you when I spray this over the model, it also seeps into the base a little bit, and it helps prevent. Uh, it help, kind of helps make all that stuff on the base a little bit more sticky for a little while, and so. Um, it, it makes sure that those rocks stick to the base and it kind of more permanently bonds all the dirt to the base and, and all that stuff. So I really like this on, uh, on, on the, the, uh, the, the dudes on a map stuff where I'm doing the base. For ships, it's a little bit less of an issue. Um, uh, a lot of times we're moving them by the stand and I don't really touch the miniatures as much. Um, I, still, I still do, uh, but, but I don't have as much of a requirement for it, so... Uh, I don't always do the ships, although sometimes I, I certainly have done it. Sometimes, all right. Let's let's move things back a little bit and let's get this Venator up here. Um, he's uh, he's largely dry, but still not dry enough for me to start putting a wash on yet. Um, he dried pretty close. He's a little off, a little off of the color of the uh, ISD. Uh, but but close enough that he's still gonna very much work with it. Actually, he looks really good. He looks really really good. Um, I like that. I like that a lot. Um, there isn't red on the side panel. Oh, I don't care if there's red on the side panels of it or not. I. I <laughs> I'm just doing it my own. I, I wanted to do something that'd be easy to do on stream, and uh, you know, and uh, so that was that was kind of my easier way to do it. Um, I don't mind if there's red on, you know, if it's if it's if it doesn't match the exact, I, I, you know, that's uh, that's fine. Because again, if I do another victory, I can maybe make that one look exactly like the one in Rapid Reinforcements, and then my two victories will be slightly different. You know, the the patterning will be slightly different. I always like making having having them be ever so different whether it's the lighting, the paneling, or something like that. But I really like the way that this victory is looking right now. Uh, he's obviously got... Uh, oh, no, no problem, no problem. I, mean, yeah. I didn't think that you were criticizing me. I, I was just, you know, and it's okay to. You can absolutely, I mean, if I'm on the internet, you can criticize me, you know, or, or at least give feedback. You know, I think feedback is important. And, uh, you know, and, you know, you, you have a voice, share it. That's what chat is for. As long as you're not being uh, cruel and usually... I don't really have to worry about people being cruel. People are usually really cool. Like I have a, a great community that comes in and uh, you know that, that that participates in in the channel. So you guys are all really nice. Um, I do need to clean my airbrush before I whoa before I get up and uh, and then leave it with gray paints stuck in there again. So I'm gonna soak it in some water right now, and uh, and then I'll wash it out a little bit later. Um, but I want to kind of wrap things up. Uh, and thank you guys for watching. This has been a good stream. Um, we got uh, got a little progress done. This is going to need some more work. I'll probably post some uh, like some better shots when this is finished on social media. So uh, so you know if you guys aren't already following me on Discord, um, definitely jump into the Discord. Uh, we've got uh, we've still got some giveaways going on there from the last live stream. That one's not over yet. Um, so you either there's still chances to get in there and uh, get some Discord giveaways. Uh, we are still doing the the big, uh, the big seventy dollars Amazon gift card giveaway for uh, Age of, uh, or sorry, Shadow Shadow Syndicate, and we'll be getting more of that. Of course, uh, Mini Stravaganza is coming up in June. Maybe we'll get more rapid reinforcements too. I think that's going to be. I'm really curious if they'll have an Armada panel at Mini Stravaganza to kind of, I mean, if nothing else, to paint an Armada ship in these colors and to talk about. Um, you know what went into making rapid reinforcements and uh, getting like Lucasfilm approval. I'm, I have I'd love to hear all about uh, what went into like what why why they chose the ships that they chose. You know, um, and if they're how open they are to doing more in the future, I would love to hear all about those things. So uh, and and maybe they even have and maybe there'll be something like oh you can expect more. Like I'd love to hear that. You know, I mean certainly calling it rapid reinforcements one uh, is kind of a. A sense that they will do 
more. Oh, I have another ship over here. I was gonna I was gonna tease for a future live stream or a future content. This was a gift from my friend David. He had this 3D printed for me. It's uh, it's an assault frigate Mark One, 3D printed. I don't know where he got it from, so I can't really promote uh, where the files are from. I'm sure their files are around all over the place. But uh, but it's weird because it doesn't have the bottom section, but then it's got it's got this. But then this part has a, a little raised area, so there's nowhere for this to fit into. So I guess I'd have to cut that off and then glue it in here to make it to make it fit. I'm not exactly sure, uh, but yes. So this would make a really cool replacement for an Assault Frigate Mark II. Uh, I'll, I may work on this. I, may, I don't know if I'll do this as an, in a live stream or just share it on social media or whatever. We'll kind of see, because this, uh, this has kind of been on my shelf for a little while, and I was like, oh crap, I gotta do this one too, and I meant to do it today, and I just forgot. We get kind of caught up in stuff, you know? I get, uh, my, my brain is all over the place. So, um, all right, guys. Well, that's going to do it for today's stream. I want to thank you guys for watching. Big thanks to my patrons. You guys are absolutely amazing. And uh, uh, I will talk to you soon. M help you enjoy the rest of your week. Get some gaming in. And look for more Legion, Armada, X-Wing, Warhammer. I, I've even got a, a, a Warhammer battle report. I'm expanding a little bit. So if you want to see that, that's up early, for early access on Patreon. Patrons get early access to battle reports and and uh, lots of other features and cool things like that. Um, so, uh, but yeah, we're trying some different stuff. Um, but I'll, I'll talk to you guys later. And uh, may the Force be with you. See ya. Bye. Bye-bye.